It's one of the most sophisticated warships on the planet. I don't think there's a ship anywhere in the world like this one. Built to handle whatever threats come its way. We found a shotgun. They oh. found a gun. This ship is about to undergo the toughest test of all. Request rules of engagement to use lethal force. Danish warship Peter Willemos will have to fight, even while wounded. Right now, we are very vulnerable. This is uh, the worst situation we have been in so far. HDMS Peter Willemos is one of the new breed of vessels in the Royal Danish Navy. Built to protect a whole convoy of ships, it's one of the most advanced frigates in the world. Security, security, security. This is Danish warship Peter Willemose. That's very good, ready for battle. The frigate is equipped with sophisticated detection systems, powerful weapons, and a highly trained crew ready to fight threats from land, sea, and air. Stay alert and be prepared to uh, counter any attack. The 130-meter-long frigate is armed with three advanced heavy artillery guns, surface-to-air and surface-to-surface -surface missiles, and large-caliber machine guns. Willemos can reach a maximum speed of 30 knots or 55 kilometers per hour. The frigate can even sail 16,000 kilometers without having to refuel. We are going to be farther. In command is Captain Christian Halman. This ship definitely uh, represents the future of the Danish Navy. For security reasons, everyone except the captain will be referred to by their first names only. Captain Howman is an experienced naval officer. He has led vessels on missions across pirate-infested waters off the coast of East Africa and through the Mediterranean to remove chemical weapons from Syria. When you deploy a ship like this, uh, then you really deploy force. When the uh, counterpart sees a ship like this, then they know that we actually mean business. And we do. From its home port in Corsa, Denmark, Willemose will sail to a remote firing range off the northwest coast of the Danish island of Zeeland. In these restricted waters, the ship and its crew will undergo a series of intense battle simulation exercises. These grueling combat scenarios are designed to challenge and surprise the crew. The first job is to get supplies, weapons and ammunition aboard. All hands rig the ship for battle. Okay, go to Curtis, I'm Executive Officer Bo is Willemo's second in command. We're loading the uh, Harpoon missile. Right now, he's making sure the crown jewel of Willemo's weapons is loaded safely onto the vessel. Missile is uh, part of our defense system. Uh, also, an offensive weapon uh, can be used against uh, other ships. It's a surface to surface missile. This week, Peter Willemos will launch a Harpoon Block II missile. This is a rare event, not just in the Danish Navy, but in the world. The Harpoon is one of the world's top anti ship missiles. This long range weapon can obliterate hostile vessels or coastal buildings. Firing this advanced armament is a first for the majority of the crew. It's important for the missile, so we're guarding it into the crate. Filled with highly volatile rocket fuel, it needs to be handled carefully. A team of six is responsible for bringing the explosive cargo on board.
as Executive Officer Bo oversees loading the missile. Logistics Officer Klaus oversees another vital load, the provisions. We are ready to uh, proceed out of the uh, port. Now it's time for Captain Howman's new ship and crew to be tested to their limits. Anything can happen this week, yeah. The training will involve fighting simulated enemy threats and coping with virtual damages to the ship. The training will be tough because uh, we know we're going to, uh, to suffer a hit uh, and so we have to, to cope with all the damages in the ship. Multiple fires, casualties, systems uh, going down. It's not going to be easy. If it was easy, they would have sent somebody else. We have to pass. We also have to make sure that those who evaluate us can see that we are ready. An elite group of military tacticians called the Sea Riders will direct the exercises and evaluate the crew. They've devised punishing battle scenarios that will test the ship and crew in extreme warfare conditions. It fire grenades, but there'll be no hit on the ship. Yeah, the, the Commander Krista is the Sea Riders' chief games master. What do they see on their screens? Is it a threat or is it not a threat? That would be hard for them to determine, and that's why we're trying to dry them. Of course, uh, we'll have the hit. And no one in the ship's crew, not even the captain, knows what Krista's team has in store. You do not know when the threats are going to uh, attack us and probably eventually uh, hit us. It's the first time all 160 sailors will be together to engage in large-scale exercises. We're going to train together as a crew, not in separate teams. This is the final national training before we are going to train with uh, international uh, partners. For everyone on board, the stakes are high. The crew must succeed in the mission, or it won't be able to join the multinational NATO response force. In just a few hours, the exercises will begin. So, uh, Lars, the desk in the ski, and then get it over. You know uh, the task for uh, this week? The, the ship's the captain hour. outlines their mission and what's at stake. This is, as you know, the last time that we will train nationally before we are going to train internationally in Germany and in England. So, make sure that you. Get the most out of uh, this training. Executive Officer Bo orders the crew to prepare the ship for battle. What's really important this morning is make sure that all items are secured. Over the next three days, the sailors on board Willemos will have to prove they can handle every battle scenario thrown at them, no matter how tough. It's as close to war as we can get. The Danish frigate has reached the edge of the restricted zone. All other vessels and aircraft are prohibited from coming near until their live fire training mission is completed. Mill. The moment the ship enters the restricted zone, the crew and Captain Howman are put straight to the test. For the first time aboard this uh, unit, we're going to uh, fire a surface-to-surface uh, -surface missile. The Harpoon Block 2 is a state-of-the-art anti-ship missile capable of sinking enemy vessels. Test firing this weapon is an exceptional event for any country's military. All hands take action stations. Harpoon make ready. Harpoon ready. At a price tag of a quarter of a million dollars per launch, there is no room for error. But there's more at stake than money. Harpoons have tremendous explosive power. Special precautions must be taken before a weapon like this can be launched. Conducting live missile firing in 20 minutes. First, a signal check. Weapon Technical Officer Peter heads to the missile pad, located in the middle of the deck. 
we're going to test to see if the signal comes from the uh, ops room down to the container and, uh, and into the missile. This is the first time Peter and many of the crew have taken part in a live fire missile test. It's considered a clever missile because you're able to actually program it with uh, GPS. So uh, the missile is, can actually be programmed to attack from a different angle. Since this is an exercise, the missile won't carry a warhead, but everything else is like real warfare. Group Alpha, engage hostile one. We're going to test it like it was a live scenario. We want to make sure that when we fire the missile and the countdown happens, the missile really does fire. One tiny mistake, and the blast from the missile's rocket booster could blow back onto the ship and her crew, causing fatal harm. Missile launch in 10 minutes. Up on deck, at a safe distance from the missile pad, two sailors set up a camera to monitor the launch. We're setting up a high-speed camera for filming the exit of the missile. We're looking when the missile exits the tube, uh, the fins uh, fall out. For a Harpoon Block II missile to launch successfully, its stabilizing fins must deploy correctly. This camera will capture the launch in ultra slow motion and monitor the jet stream coming out after the blast. When the missile is fired, uh, there's a big uh, rocket booster uh, being uh, ignited and um, that creates a lot of heat on the deck. Firing the harpoon will determine whether the ship's missile shield can withstand such high temperatures. After the missile firing, we go to see if uh, there's been any damages to uh, the superstructure. There's a protection shield just below the, uh, the Hubble missile, supposed to, to pick up the heat from there. Time, minus five minutes. We're going to plug in the cables to the missiles, and everything should be good to go. The signal from the ops room to the missile has been checked and is working. The countdown is on. 30 seconds. In order to uh, make sure that we are ready for battle, we need to pass this test. Five, four, three, two, one, launch. Yeah, there are these seconds where you think, come so, come so. Perfect launch, uh, perfect uh, procedures, uh, that was great. And you always wait for those seconds to pass uh, and the missile actually to fly away. Uh, and uh, that, of course, is a little bit uh, nerve-wracking, but, but uh, it worked uh, fully as it should. Captain Halman must scrutinize the high-speed footage to be sure it was a perfect launch. Fly out is uh, completely clean, that uh, all fins, all stabilizers and everything uh, on the missile actually works. The fire from the missile also leaves uh, the ship without uh, doing any harm, any damage to, to the ship. You can see the smoke and the fire is diverted up away from the ship and that is how it exactly should be. So um, perfect. What was once a missile is now just uh, fried electronics. All this is supposed to happen. But it looks like quite a battle scene. A lot of jet fumes has been blown this way. Obviously, it's going to get very hot. No damages uh, that we didn't uh, expect. So uh, all in all, I think it looks good. After successfully testing the most lethal weapon on board, Willemo's crew moves on to the next phase of the exercise. We still have a lot uh, more to do, uh, a lot more training and it's going to uh, certainly get a lot more intense. As night falls, navigation officer Cassandra spots a suspicious vessel steaming through restricted waters. Merchant vessel Seidenfaden, this is Danish Navy warship Foxtrot 362, calling you on channel 69, over. This is an exclusive zone, um, and therefore she is not supposed to be here. This is Foxtrot 362. Cassandra continues to push for answers. I request you state your port of origin, your flag, port of registry, international call sign, your cargo, last port of call and next port of call, and final destination. Over. This is uh, Gunnar Seidenfaden. My flag state is Barbados. 
Polo Grey Street, Bridgetown. Well, we just uh, checked uh, the data that we received on uh, on the vessel. It turns out we, this ship might be uh, smuggling uh, weapons. The captain makes the call Stand by. to raid the vessel. Off the coast of Denmark, state-of-the-art naval frigate Peter Willemose is launching a night raid exercise on a vessel that has entered restricted waters. We have a possible uh, embargo breaker which uh, we uh, are going to uh, board. This mission is part of intensive battle training for the Danish warship and her crew. The vessel they will board belongs to the Danish Navy, and its embargo-breaking crew will be played by naval personnel. We're going to board the ship and we're going to ask them a few questions. Questions like, uh, what's your cargo? Do you have any illegal substances on board? The captain of the ship they will board has planted one suspicious item on his vessel. Only he knows where it's hidden. Willemo's crew will be tested on their ability to find contraband and how they handle the search. We're going to do a friendly approach, but uh, if uh, things heat up, we're ready to get hostile with them. They are armed for self-defense. I never send people on, on missions like this without them being able to defend themselves. Counter piracy is one of the most common tasks performed by the Danish Navy. It's also one of the most dangerous. The main challenge is to uh, make sure that the uh, vessel we bought is corroborated. Then there's the security challenge. It's uh, dark, it's water, it's cold. Right away, they face their first test. The pilot ladder that was uh, put in place is uh, assessed to be unsafe to climb on. The ladder is in a dangerous spot. Willemose orders it to be moved. They have to move the ladder further to the aft. The merchant vessel complies. Seidenfarten is ready to receive his boarding team. The ladder is positioned further down the ship. For this training exercise, Force Protection and Border Officer Trina takes the lead. Can you show me the ship papers? You will do no harm to your crew members, to the, or to the cargo, or to yeah. the ship. Ten crew members. Yeah. Trina reviews the ship's papers. Weapon Technical Officer Peter directs members of his team to locate the cargo hold for the possible search and seizure. That's usually where we find um, contraband, such as weapons, drugs, etc. From the Combat Information Center on Willemose, the captain watches his team closely. They're going to go through the uh, gangway over to the starboard side and do the search there. That's what we're going to do now, if uh, that's okay with you. Yeah, I don't have any choice. Do I? No, you don't. To Captain Howman, any resistance to a search raises a red flag. If they uh, find some contraband, uh, then the crew might uh, act in a way which could escalate the situation. We, of course, uh, do not want that to happen. Then, one of Willemo's boarding officers finds a weapon. It's not mine. Do you, no. do you know where this weapon no. is from? No, no, no. You don't have any knowledge? Sir, so they found a shotgun. They oh. found a gun? Yeah, they found a shotgun uh, in one of the co compartments over there. That is uh, not something we want to find. The captain orders the crew to sweep the entire vessel. There's uh, ten rooms, and we would like to do a quick sweep of the rooms. For the next hour, the search party combs the vessel. They find nothing else. Satisfied, the captain recalls his team. Is okay? The only thing they found was a shotgun, uh, which we initially thought was illegal. It turned out to be uh, a shotgun used for uh, hunting, and the papers were missing. For Captain Howman, this exercise couldn't have gone better. His crew located the contraband weapon as it should and handled the situation calmly. What we have been uh, training today is, is uh, very close to uh, the real thing. Actually, I guess it's more or less uh, the closest you can get. When you're on, you, you feel the adrenaline kick in, and uh, then it's just uh, like the real thing. 
the crew returns to its quarters for some much needed sleep. None of them has any idea what battle exercises the Sea Riders have planned for tomorrow. This uh, is, I'm sure, the calm before the storm. Day two of the Royal Danish Navy's intense battle training on board HDMS Peter Willemos. Leader of the Sea Riders, Krista, is eager to see how the crew will react to today's scenario. This scenario uh, is constructed both the external and the internal to be as close to a real-time war scenario as we can. It will start with a plane coming in and uh, a fighter bomber that they have to uh, defend themselves against. Integral to the war games is a specialized training complex known as the Naval Weapon Center. It's located just south of the restricted zone on a 15 kilometer long peninsula called Shalen's Ole. The technical team here works in tandem with the Sea Riders to pull off Krista's complex war scenarios. It begins with drones simulating enemy aircraft carrying missiles. This is a Banshee aerial target. The propeller version is capable of doing close to 400 kilometers an hour, and we can keep it flying up to three hours. We use them for aerial targets for missile practice for both the Danish Air Force and the Danish Navy. The Naval Weapons Center control tower receives word from the Sea Riders to prepare to launch the drones. There are two drones that are, are going to uh, simulate an attack. They're simulating two Mirage uh, fighters. The gunners on Willemos will shoot live rounds at the drones. As the drones are far smaller than the aircraft they would be facing in a real battle situation, each drone is equipped with an onboard sensor that detects how close the rounds have come. Any round that strikes within two meters of the drone is considered a hit. We are checking that the telemetry antenna is uh, in the right place when you were putting the tail fin on. Back on the Willemos, the crew secures the vessel for battle. Then, Executive Officer Bo sounds the alarm. Action stations, closing condition, Zulu. Bo stays on the bridge for the exercise. Captain Howman heads downstairs to the Combat Information Center to direct the operations. Test, outlook. Here, the captain relies on intel from Operations Officer Niels to assess the level of threats to his ship. As long as they are white, we are basically safe. And if it changes to red, then uh, there's an imminent threat to, to the ship. Back at the Naval Weapon Center, the simulated air attacks are launched. TIC, Officer of the Watch, Italian incoming aircraft, wings dirty. Be prepared to, to uh, conduct warning uh, for if a Mirage turns inbound. Just like in a real war, the crew has just seconds to react to this incoming air threat. We are flew incoming from Barbour side, time on top, two minutes. The aircraft are now in firing range. 12 seconds. Brace, brace, brace. Off the coast of Denmark, warship HCMS Willemos is immersed in intense battle training. Any aircraft now within release range. Forsvars skydning, simultan skud, to skud for hver pjæse samtidig. Right now, the ship is under threat from drones simulating a jet fighter attack. In the munitions room, weapons officers reload the massive 76 mm shells. Kill, that's good. Is that killed? That's perfect. We have destroyed them before they were able to attack us. The gunners have successfully fired their rounds within two meters of the drones, neutralizing the airstrike.
site. But the radar indicates that the attack is not over. We have two uh, surface uh, combatants. For this scenario, there are no actual vessels out on the water. But Krista and his team introduced two virtual warships into Willemo's detection system. And the crew must react as if this potential threat is real. We are talking to them, telling them not to enter the zone which we are protecting. My biggest concern is that, that they fire their missiles before I am able to react. So that's why my finger is on the trigger. But there is a problem with one of those triggers. The 76 millimeter gun on the foredeck of the ship has failed. Yeah, we have an issue regarding the hydraulic pressure in the, in the guns. The weapon malfunction is real. It's not part of the planned exercise. Now the crew must tackle the repair in the midst of combat training. The pressure is mounting. Uh, I still have missiles and I have the close-in weapon systems. I need the medium uh, range guns. Then the Sea Riders team inject a surprise into the battle scenario. They trip the alarm. The crew braces for impact. One of the hostile ships has fired its grenades. The Willemos takes its first hit, albeit a simulated one. Below deck, the Sea Riders release smoke bombs to simulate fires at the point of impact. Jørg, det er næstkommenderende. Structured look fra broen. Vi er ramt af granater. Spidskib styr på vores side. Der er hul. Vi kan se rådudvikling. Executive Officer Bo sends a team to assess the damage. A second in command, he stays on the bridge to oversee the evasive maneuvers. These defensive moves will avoid any further hits and assist in the counterattack. 165, start on 165. Dead ahead. All headful. reaches her maximum speed of 30 knots. Then turns port side into firing position. We're gonna fire guns, 35 millimeter. Now we're gonna fire. Willemos unleashes her 35 millimeter artillery gun. We have engaged uh, one service combatant. This deadly weapon can fire a thousand rounds a minute. Willemos may have neutralized the immediate threat but it's taken its toll on the ship. Executive Officer Bo gets word there is significant damage to the vessel from the grenade hit. We can see down on the uh, on starboard side, we hit uh, more or less a midship. There's a big uh, hole in the ship, most likely also fire because we can see smoke. The damage from the Sea Rider's grenade hit manifests as a simulated hole midway down the side of the ship with fires around the main staircase. Since the hole is above the waterline, it's not a top priority. But the fires need immediate attention. Willemo's crew must tackle the damage just as it would in a real battle. Still, damage control officer Kenneth is confident the crew can handle what the Sea Riders have thrown at them so far. Right now, we have uh, three fires on board. Uh, we are fighting those. I could get a lot worse. But the Sea Riders are about to raise the stakes. The radar shows that the second ship is firing missiles on Willemos. The crew has to respond as if these simulated missiles were real. Engage inbound missile from the south. Open fire. Fortunately, the frigate's gunners smash the incoming missiles in the nick of time. Kill. The enemy missiles are destroyed, but Krista and the Sea Riders complicate the exercise even more. We have splashed them, however, fragments have impacted in the aft part of the ship. As if actual missile debris has hit Willemos, the Sea Riders disable the ship's automatic steering. A maintenance team hurries to fix it. 
In the midst of all the commotion, there is some good news. We just fixed the gun and it's ready now. The 76mm artillery gun is back in action. Willemose is once again at full weapons capacity. Below deck, the technicians shift over to manual steering. They crank the rudders inwards 10 degrees. Then the bridge team steers the ship using only the propellers. To do that, they alter the angle of the blades on one propeller, so it drives backwards. This enables the ship to turn in that direction. We have uh, manually angled the, uh, the rudders, and we are now able, with the, uh, the one propeller, more or less, to, uh, to steer. How does it go out of the steering machine? Have you overlooked it? Yeah, it's fair enough. Green, it G15. Things are once again under control. As the battle exercise comes to a close, Captain Christian Hellman assesses the crew's performance. The most challenging part was actually the internal part of it. The external war fighting the threats uh, went very well. Uh, today we uh, uh, engaged uh, all targets uh, and it was only scrap that which uh, made uh, an impact on us. The only threat in the area is uh, one Orion orbiting uh, west of the force. Alfred warning now, yellow weapons. Sea Riders leader Krista is also pleased with the crew's handling of the exercise. It went uh, pretty well. We had uh, both uh, to engage air targets and uh, also surface targets. The unit was uh, capable of doing that, uh, even though they struggled with incidents that we didn't inject. So they were able to uh, cope quite well with the threat. The crew passed today's tests, but tomorrow's exercises will be even tougher. I believe tomorrow will be more intense. We learn by putting ourselves to the limit all the time, every time we train. That's the way we learn. I'm ready for tomorrow. Day three of the Royal Danish Navy's highest level of battle training aboard warship Peter Willemose. The intensity will increase today. After yesterday's successful exercise, Game Master Krista and his team of Sea Riders are turning up the heat. We'll have a coordinated attack today uh, where we'll see uh, two ships firing against them, so they have to take down four missiles instead of two. But it doesn't stop there. The whole bridge will be uh, filled with casualties, so the officer of the watch, the lookout and the helmsman will be uh, injured, so we'll have to see how they cope. The crew is barely at their stations when the first threats are spotted on the radar. We can now see that uh, enemy aircraft has uh, taken off from shore, anticipating for an, uh, an airstrike against us. Seconds later, the Sea Riders initiate suspicious communications. Willemo's crew intercepts the signals. And the radar picks up two ships crossing into the restricted zone. Below deck in the combat information center, Captain Howman must first deal with the enemy fighter jets approaching. Our mission is to enforce an area so that nobody gets into this area. If they do, we of course will uh, fight them. The drones, simulating enemy jets, launch their first attack. However, one of the drones malfunctions. But the war games must go on. The Sea Riders order another immediate launch. Engaging missiles. Willemose unleashes all her weapons to counter the air attack. That was a very close call. Our layered defense worked and uh, we succeeded. The success is short lived. The Sea Riders team wastes no time in challenging the crew further. A virtual submarine appears on the sonar. I expect within a short time we will have a submarine which we have to defend uh, ourselves against. With the submarine lurking at the edge of the radar, the battle escalates. The hostile ships fire four missiles at Willemos. Chat's coming. The ship successfully defends herself, but is hit by flaming debris. Come 
On the bridge, the sea riders designate four casualties, including the helmsman. Nearby, they set a fire. It is a stressful situation. They're putting us to the limit right now. Medics rush to help the wounded. Executive Officer Bo heads below deck to check the damage and confer with his captain. Yeah, they could come safe for the the fragments of the missile that came in. Yeah, all of them burned. They blew it up. The main firefighting station is out of commission. Some weapons and detection systems are also impaired, and there are a number of other casualties. The crew's ability to cope with the internal damage and fight external threats is now compromised. This is the scenario the Sea Riders team had worked so hard to create. And through it all, the captain keeps his cool. It can get much worse, so we're still ready. Krista and his team of Sea Riders throw another spanner into the works. There was an MMI file in P2. They cut the power to the sonar. An electronics team springs into action. The problem is that we we have lost some uh, power, and what we are trying to investigate here is where did we lose the power? Without sonar, they can't track the submarine. When a hostile submarine evades detection, it spells disaster for a ship. Submarine is one of the toughest enemies to counter. For Captain Hellman, defending his ship is the top priority. Nothing else matters. You should always make sure that you maintain your self-defense. That is the basis of all. Even without sonar, his experienced captain knows exactly what to do. He calls for backup. A helicopter will keep tabs on the approaching underwater threat. Meanwhile, the ship's second in command must figure out how to cope with limited manpower. We have uh, 12 uh, casualties around the ship, and uh, with the uh, crew size that we have, that hurts. hospital area they need uh, extra personnel for as uh, stretchers we do not now at this time have extra people to spare so i'll have to see what the need actually is in war no one knows how long a battle will last so even in the middle of a fight logistics officer klaus must feed the crew without compromising the defense of the ship We are preparing dinner for the crew so they can maintain their fighting ability. They're still on their action stations. Klaus and his cooks have only 74 minutes to feed the 160-person crew, clean up, and return to their own battle stations. The crew is divided into three teams. Each team has no more than six minutes to eat their meals. Team one is almost done, and the next team, team two, consisting of 55 persons. So we need to get team one out now, back on the post. The moment Bo finishes his six-minute meal, he's back up on the bridge. The fire that we caught in the forward part of the ship on the bridge where we are right now and below has been extinguished. Uh, surveillance radar, which was down a few minutes ago, is now back online. Just as the situation seems to be easing, the captain is thrown a curveball. The helicopter tracking the submarine is having engine trouble. It must land on the ship's deck to investigate. With the ship's sonar out of commission, and the helicopter attempting an emergency landing, Willemose is now fully exposed to a submarine attack. Right now, we are very vulnerable. This is the worst situation we have been in so far. The ship is now fighting for people's subsurface. The ship's submarine detection system is still being repaired. 
they have a problem with the sonar. Below deck, technicians continue to investigate the sonar's power supply as a sea rider evaluates their handling of the situation. Uh, is it okay from here? Uh, I would say no, since we lost uh, this uh, what's it, output? Yeah, the output voltage. With a simulated hostile submarine coming closer and no eyes on the underwater threat, the technicians must work against the clock. Subsurface threat warning yellow. As the crew rushes to restore the sonar, the sea riders simulate a major catastrophe on deck. We had a helicopter crashing on our, our helo deck. Wow! There was a lot of injuries, and uh, now we have to fight the fire. Now it's an oil fire, uh, and we have to fight that completely different from uh, a normal fire. If this were a wheel battle and we were too slow, people could die. In spite of the damage and the impaired sonar, the captain must defend his ship. Yeah. Request rules of engagement to use lethal force. The submarine refuses to back down. Willemose launches a torpedo. Without sonar or tracking helicopter, the gunners estimate the sub's location and miss it by a hair. We actually do not think that we have hit the submarine. But there is good news. The technicians may have repaired the sonar. We'll have to do a one thing to see if it can transmit. There was a sound. Sonar, back online. The sonar is back up and running. Meanwhile, on the helicopter deck, most of the flames are under control. The most serious casualties are now in the hospital. In the combat information center, the captain once again has a clear picture of the underwater threat. The hostile submarine, shaken by Willemo's torpedo, is retreating. The Danish warship has driven it away. We were pushed to, to the very limit. The battle simulation exercise is drawing to a close. They caught us off guard. The crew performed uh, very well. And they are still in a good mood, enthusiastic. And all the sea riders, I mean, they have done a brilliant job today. It takes a lot of effort for them to create a scenario like this. For the creators of the battle scenarios, the sailors aboard HTMS Willemose performed beyond expectation. It was intense because their equipment went down. Uh, so because of the internal damages, they had a hard time fighting the external battle because uh, they were very hampered, but they managed to fight through this. The hardest part was rectifying problems in the right priority. The threat is what drives what you should repair first, and that is always a challenge, making sure that you are focusing right. For the ship's captain, the intense training has shown how his crew steps up under extreme pressure. As a crew, we uh, work, uh, of course, much better together now after having been through such an uh, intense week of training where we have all been uh, pressured to the limit and probably actually uh, above the limit at some times. As a captain, I'm uh, most proud of uh, my crew. Captain Halman has reason to be proud. Willemo's crew has passed the test. Today is a special feeling because we have completed our national training and uh, now we are ready to, to take to the next level. The crew has proved it has the skills to join a multinational naval force and prepare for future NATO missions. After this uh, final uh, training, uh, we will uh, most certainly be ready for uh, any upcoming uh, missions. We will be ready for anything. The captain and crew have experienced what this ultra-modern fighting machine is capable of. Together, they've got what it takes to combat enemy threats on the high seas.
It's one of the most sophisticated warships on the planet. I don't think there's a ship anywhere in the world like this one. Built to handle whatever threats come its way. We found a shotgun. They oh. found a gun. This ship is about to undergo the toughest test of all. Request rules of engagement to use lethal force. Danish warship Peter Willemos will have to fight, even while wounded. Right now, we are very vulnerable. This is uh, the worst situation we have been in so far. HDMS Peter Willemos is one of the new breed of vessels in the Royal Danish Navy. Built to protect a whole convoy of ships, it's one of the most advanced frigates in the world. Security, security, security. This is Danish warship Peter Willemose. That's very good, ready for battle. The frigate is equipped with sophisticated detection systems, powerful weapons, and a highly trained crew ready to fight threats from land, sea, and air. Stay alert and be prepared to uh, counter any attack. The 130-meter-long frigate is armed with three advanced heavy artillery guns, surface-to-air and surface-to-surface -surface missiles, and large-caliber machine guns. Willemos can reach a maximum speed of 30 knots or 55 kilometers per hour. The frigate can even sail 16,000 kilometers without having to refuel. We are going to be farther. In command is Captain Christian Halman. This ship definitely uh, represents the future of the Danish Navy. For security reasons, everyone except. It's one of the most sophisticated warships on the planet. I don't think there's a ship anywhere in the world like this one. Built to handle whatever threats come its way. We found a shotgun. They oh. found a gun. This ship is about to undergo the toughest test of all. Request rules of engagement to use lethal force. Danish warship Peter Willemos will have to fight, even while wounded. Right now, we are very vulnerable. This is uh, the worst situation we have been in so far. HDMS Peter Willemos is one of the new breed of vessels in the Royal Danish Navy. Built to protect a whole convoy of ships, it's one of the most advanced frigates in the world. Security, security, security. This is Danish warship Peter Willemos. That's very good, ready for battle. The frigate is equipped with sophisticated detection systems, powerful weapons, and a highly trained crew ready to fight threats from land, sea, and air. Stay alert and be prepared to uh, counter any attack. The 130-meter-long frigate is armed with three advanced heavy artillery guns surface-to-air and surface-to-surface -surface missiles, and large-caliber machine guns. Willemos can reach a maximum speed of 30 knots or 55 kilometers per hour. Starboard, hard, one, four, five. The frigate can even sail 16,000 kilometers without having to refuel. We are going to be farther. In command is Captain Christian Halman. This ship definitely uh, represents the future of the Danish Navy. For security reasons, everyone except the captain will be referred to by their first names only. 